What's up, everybody? It's CC from Sound on the Hill, Sound Everywhere, and today we are here with Chris Voice. What's up, Chris? What's going on? What's How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm living life, man. I'm feeling good about everything I got going, and I'm glad to be here with you. Man. Good. Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself. <sighs> man, well, I'm from Hobson City, Alabama. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's about two hours away from here. Shout out to Huntsville, man. I'm down here performing this weekend. Um, hey. I was... Uh, I used to be in this group called Hamilton Park. Um, we were signed to Atlantic. I was discovered by Andre Harrell. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's the same guy that discovered Jodeci, Guy, Mary J. Blige, Al B. Shore. Heavy D was his first artist. You know what I'm saying? So he really made sure that niggas could sing. For yes. lack of better words. You know what I'm saying? He, I remember him coming to the house that we had in Atlanta before he signed us and everything. And took us through a very rigorous artist development phase. Something like uh, P. Diddy the Band. That TV show is very similar to that. Personal trainers, a lot of stuff, and you know he took us through the he took us through there, man. But he said yes when everybody else said no, and you know he had an untimely passing a couple of years ago, man. Mm -hmm. So I proudly wear that cape, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Andre Harrell, man. Appreciate you for everything. Love that. Okay, let's take it back a, a little bit. Um, what are some of your favorite childhood memories when it comes to music? My grandmother, man, Jamie yeah. Walker, she used to she used to listen to so many, you know what I'm saying, uh, some of the old school classics like I'll Be Sure, you know what I'm saying, uh, Marvin Gaye, Smokey, Smokey Robinson, and I just remember listening to those records with my grandmother at home while she was cleaning up, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and, and not knowing, I guess it was like just getting embedded in my DNA at the time, you know what I'm saying, but I'm just, I'm just like, yo, this is good music, you know, and and next thing I know, I'm watching movies like Five Heartbeats and Temptations, and yeah. and uh, I'm I'm hearing stories about how, as a child, my grandmother saw me inspired by those films. You know what I'm saying? And and it's kind of like a a law of attraction thing. I put it out there in the world, and just it just came back to me. And now here I am, now a grown man doing music, living. Hey, you know what I'm doing music. I love it. I love it. So, what kind of impact do you want? your audience to get from the type of music that you make i like that word that you chose impact and yeah. that's exactly what i want to to i want to happen when they hear my music i want i want you to hear the struggle i want you to hear the grind i want you to hear the growth i want you to hear the process you know what i'm saying not just show you the glitz and glamour because yes. i come from hobson city alabama you know what i'm saying we only got one traffic light down there so <laughs> yeah how dare you try to act like you, you you was born with a silver spoon in your mouth you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying you got to be able to show people both sides so i want people to 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 hear the drive the ambition the consistency and the development in my music and even when they look at me as a brand you know what i'm saying just the whole independent standpoint i love what i do and i believe in myself and and that's what it takes when, when you're doing this sort of thing. You just got to just step out on faith and just assert that confidence. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I want people, especially my children, you know what I'm saying? When they get older and they watch these interviews and they see shows and stuff, I want you to understand that it's, it's about not giving up on yourself. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? I want you to, when you look at me, I want you to see not giving up. This is what it looks like when you don't quit, when you don't accept no. No matter what happens, the trials and tribulations, you know, the... The whole situation with, with, with my group, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it doesn't matter. You just keep driving, keep going, you know what I'm saying? And by the way, that's no bad blood. Me and my group, we're very good. Me and Anthony got a pool <laughs> party coming up on the 4th. Hey. We just did a show in Anderson, and we got another one coming up. So Hamilton Park's <laughs> doing good, you know what I'm saying? It's just a it's just a touch and go thing with, with life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You live and you learn. You know? Okay, let's touch on the group a little bit. So you were actually the former lead singer yes. in the group, right? Yes. Tell me about that experience. I mean, well, that that was a that was a hell of an experience, you know what I'm saying? I, like I said, I'm from Hobson City, and and when it, when it was bestowed upon me to be the lead singer, it was like, are you sure? You want me to do it? You know what I'm saying? You know, he sound good, he sound good, he sound good too, you know. But everybody felt like I had the personality, I had the whatever, you know what I'm saying? Face, mm -hmm. persona, image, or whatever. So mm -hmm. I had to step out there and lead the guys, man. And and, and they were so, you know, and and it's it's different to be the lead singer, but you know, and, and, and to be propelled by the group. Everybody's yeah. okay with that. Like, bro, you the lead. You know what I'm saying? Stand on that. Stand on business. You the lead singer. You know what I'm saying? Give that lead singer persona. So, 
yeah, shout out to the guys, man. It was it was a great experience working with them, man. You know, everything we 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 took a hiatus, you know what I'm saying? But really what happened was we we developed into men. You know what I'm saying? We started having kids, you know, we started living life. So that took us in different directions. Anthony started acting and doing plays. Marcus is um really working really close with children. That's why it, uh, I had to tap in when bro said that they got the open mic tomorrow for the kids. You know what I'm saying? I know my, my bro loves stuff like that. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like, you know, us as men, we starting to give back to the kids and the next generation in our own way. You know what I'm saying? So it makes a lot of sense. Nice, yeah. nice. So how hard or easy has your transition been from group lead to solo artist? Oh, man, I got to be transparent about that. I ain't got nobody to hide behind now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got nobody to hit the choreography with. It's all on me. I ain't got no backup singers, nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just all just me on that stage by myself. And sometimes when I'm up there, I do miss looking to my left and seeing Royce or, you know what I'm saying, looking to my right, seeing Ant. You know what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. I do miss that. But, you know, everybody's on their own solo endeavors now doing big things. And it's amazing that we can tap in with each other and collaborate with each other and you know with my single and like I said me and Ant got a, a pool party coming up in a couple of weeks and we're just working together freely you know what I'm saying can't nobody yes. tell us what to do the label can't oh we don't know about that one it's just we stepping out there and we doing what we want to do more vulnerable more intimate yes yes and and at first from from being um when coming into the music industry when we came in it wasn't it was the total opposite of what it is today like being vulnerable and, and, and exposing yourself and who you really are is mm -hmm. more attractive yeah. versus it was like, you know, you lay in wait and you drop a single at midnight, drop your whole project. Nobody knew it was coming. You know what I'm saying? Well polished, well development, years of artist development before anybody even sees you. But now the more real you are and the more straight out the box you are with people, you know, you get further. The more you get respected. Right. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so give me three words that describe your style and influence as an artist. Three words. I would say, I have to say cool first, first and foremost. Okay. Second, I'm going to say smooth, of course. You know what I'm saying? It's playing off the cool again. And last but not least, because I've always heard this about myself, just nonchalant. 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 You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm going to be me. And I don't care how you feel about it, but... I'm going to be me tomorrow, and I'm going to be happy about it. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah, no matter what you say. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell me about your single. How did that come about? Um, it's Body, right? Yeah, Body. Yes. Body. And um, I, I dropped Body uh, on New Year's Day of uh, 2023 on midnight. I wanted to make sure that as people was counting down from 10, as soon as you got the one, you was able to download my single. You know hey, what I'm saying? Okay. On, on, on the independent standpoint, but the body, uh, the body record is more so uh, uh, of a women empowerment record. You know what I'm saying? Because I know if you go and watch the video, um, I chose to pick uh, performers, like instead of like models and stuff like that. You know, um, I have a contortionist in the video, and I have an aerial dancer, and I have a lyra pole dancer, and that's two. They do three totally different things, but they're for lack of better words, they're circus performers, to be honest with you. That's what they do on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So they had never done anything like that before. So that was, you know, with me never booking anybody like that to be in the video and them never doing anything like that, it was the first time for both of us. And it, it turned out great. But when people see that visual, I want people to be inspired, you know what I'm saying, as far as what their bodies are doing. Don't don't never want to be what somebody else is. Yeah. Just, just be yourself, you know what Absolutely. I'm saying? And somebody will appreciate that and they'll take their time with it and they're gonna make it right. You know what I'm saying? So I love that's what it. it's all about. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Somebody for everybody. You know? Okay, so tell me, um, I know you focus more on R and B, but if you had to make music in a different genre, what do you think you would gravitate towards? Oh, it's crazy because I've been stepping out of I've been stepping out and and doing a lot of things these days. Uh I would say country. Okay. Either country or, you know what I'm saying, I, I could definitely see myself. Uh, I did a, um, I was working on a soundtrack with a friend of mine the other day, and he had to do some 80s records. Mm. So I had to lock in. I had to lock in, and I had to go vintage for a couple of weeks and channel some 80s vibes, and I came up with some cool records, and I was just like, I wonder what it would be like to be an artist back in, like, 85, 86. Lit. You know, lit, super lit, lit man. And, um, just, but, yeah, just... 
just I think I think it would be those those type of genres, you know, and 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 being able to experiment and you know what I'm saying tapping into what I tapped into, I'm really really on some like literally right now as we speak, I've been thinking and developing and meditating on different vibes as far as the way I dress, the way I the music and everything. I want to mm-hmm. be able to really show versatility in every way. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so with that being said, what are some guilty pleasure songs that you listen to that people might not think you know or that may be out of the norm? Oh man, I listen to some of everything <laughs> for real. Like Ed Sheeran, uh, One Republic, mm. uh, Blink 182. Yes. Uh, uh, like the list goes on. I, I, I'm 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 an eclectic when it comes to that man. Shout out to Pharrell. You know, working with Pharrell, mm. he's like a he's like a, a a walking DJ crate. And I'm talking about he would like we would be in the studio. He would he would quote like, oh yeah, that's that record that came out in the '40s, like the '40s, bro. And you can just go through your mental and just, yeah, yeah, that's that record. That's that sample. Because that's all he does all day is just yeah. sit back and create. You know what I'm saying? So uh, just, just I feel like just every, every it's a lot of records out there. I don't know the artists in particular, but I love to expand my palette on music. You know, I don't, I, sometimes I do close in and, you know, I'm future gonna, you know what I'm saying, young thug for a couple of months, but. Every now and then I'll step out, especially around the summertime. You want to hear mm-hmm. those good vibes, you know, different music. You feel me? Yes. Okay, so you pretty much have touched touched a lot of aspects in, in the music realm, um, but also you have a role, right, for season two of The Dirty D. Yes. Tell me about your role and how that came about. And it came about just, you know, being an independent artist on this independent path. I was sitting at the crib just like everybody else, you know what I'm saying? I, I like to talk about doing normal things. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sitting back, sitting at the crib, chilling, having a drink, you know what I'm saying, pop two on, you know, trying to find an independent film, something. I want to be inspired. That's what I was looking for that night. I was looking to be inspired, and I came across, you know, the Dirty D season two, I mean, the first season. I came across the first season, and I'm, I'm watching. I'm liking the script. I'm liking the way that it's shot. I'm liking the camera angles. I'm liking... I'm liking the energy that I'm getting. Just by watching. Just by watching yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm like, I'm, you know, it makes made me sit up just like this here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, hey, I like that. I wanna see if the director or the writers are, are tangible in any way. Mm-hmm. So I, I started looking up the actors, I started looking up the uh, the director, you know, shout out to Miss Lisa Brown. Um when I reached out to her and found her Instagram, she um she was having a, a audition for season two. Now mind you, I'm in Hobson City, Alabama. But as soon as I saw that on her Instagram, I immediately made um, adjustments to be able to drive up there. 14 hours all the way from Alabama to Detroit to the place where they were doing the um, the, the meeting for the auditions. And I was there 30 minutes early. Mm. So when she opened the door, I got the number one. Hey. So I was the first person she saw. And then I went up there, delivered the lines, did the audition. She asked me about myself. I told her I was from Alabama. I told her I drove all the way up here for this moment. Only. I don't know what's going to happen, but I wanted to be here. I love what y'all doing with that show. And it reached me all the way down there in Alabama. She gave me a role on the spot. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that comes from just being on time. or yeah. you know. It comes from a lot of things. Being on time and being prepared so you don't have to. You, you, you stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Absolutely. You know, because even at that time, I had just got off of... Um, Stand in gig. I was um, standing in for uh, standing. I, I stand in a lot too on on, on the film side. That's that's where I got my early uh, ex- exposure from for the acting. Then I started doing um, photo doubles and stunt doubles for uh, Quavo of all people. Oh wow! Okay, how was that? It was fun. It was cool. It was yeah. Cool. I mean, I feel like everybody else manifested that because I get that all the time. Oh, you look like one of the Migos. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like that was everybody else's law of attraction bringing that to me. Next thing I know, I'm doing the praise this. Um, the background thing I was doing on there, I was in a scene, a small intimate scene where Quavo was in the studio and Chloe walks in with her cousin in, in the movie and me and my friends are standing there. We're Quavo's posse, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. from there, I, um, the, the casting director saw me and she was like, you know, Quavo's finna get ready to do another movie and we think that you would be a good uh, double for him. So. I was able to go and take that trip for a while. And I was fresh off of 
doing something like that when I saw the audition for Dirty D and I went up there, you know, so I'm just all over the place. I don't, when I see something and, it, and, it, and it, I feel good about it, I gotta go. I gotta go give it energy because I feel like I'm gonna get something good back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Love it. Okay, so you mentioned, you know, of course, being an independent artist and staying ready, ready so you won't have to get ready. Right. That's the main thing. What else would you suggest for artists or creatives trying to take the independent route when it comes to the music industry? Know the business, know your value, and know your worth. Yes. But you know what? In reverse order, know your worth. Know your worth. And then, of course, understand the business. But never ever accept anything under your value, your personal value. You know what you're worth. So most definitely never settle, man, because there's a market out there for everybody. You know, and and and, and I'm living proof of that because I come from being in a group. I mean I come from being a solo artist to being in a group to going back to a solo artist and now I'm I'm really about to try a whole bunch of different stuff. Like to to because I feel like I can. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I don't want to close myself in. That's another thing, too. Don't close yourself in. Don't box yourself in. Please step out on every single lily pad you can, just like that yes. frog. Just hop, hop to them. Go see what works. If it don't work, hop to another one. Yeah. Okay. okay, so do you have any upcoming projects or anything that we need to know about? Um, yeah, I got a, I just saw the trailer when I was uh, en route down in Huntsville. I saw the trailer. They had... Um, we got a movie coming out called Dirty uh, on Tubi. I saw, uh, shout out to Steve Morgan, the director of that. I seen he just unleashed the uh, official trailer for it after taking a hiatus. I couldn't get him on the phone for a while, but I see what you was doing, <laughs> big dog. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we got we got that coming and uh, just more shows, more life, man, just in general. And I'm, I got more auditions coming up, too. I'm, I'm stepping into trying to do my own independent films as well. You know what I'm saying? So yes. just be on the lookout in general, man. Tap in, follow me at Real Chris Voice, www.iamchrisvoice.com. Chris Voice on Facebook, man. Just keep up with me because I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off, doing everything. <laughs> and you got a performance here uh, tomorrow. Where Where is your performance? At the camp, man. Hey. And I, I, I've been looking on it. I've been looking at it on social media and stuff. It looks like a very cool place. I'm excited, very eager to perform there, man. I'm very eager to eager to go get some content and yeah, just touch the people, you know what I'm saying? Just spread around my music and promo and vibe, you know. I got merch, too, coming out there, too. Okay, merch? So, yeah. I'll be out there with my merch, too, so please tap in and support. Yes. Okay, guys, there we have it. This was our interview with Chris Voice. Please be sure to look him up, check him out, all his music. And this won't be the last time you see him. I'm going to just stamp that right there. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for listening, and we're out.